Welcome to the National Marine Aquarium. My name is Joe, and this is episode two of Peter Science. I'm really, really excited to talk to you today. We're here to talk about the Atlantic Ocean Tank. And not only is this our biggest tank, but this is the biggest tank in the world. It's about 100 years old. We're so, so, so lucky to be here today, and I'm so excited to bring you this lesson. Because this week is all about classification. How are we going to sort out these different groups? How do we work out what they are? Before we go any further, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who tuned in last week. We received so many comments, so many photos, so many videos. Oh, look at weird shape that they can hold this map. And if you can see yourself, then thank you so much for sending this in. Uh, we learned all about underwater landscapes and underwater volcanoes. And as you can see here, there are some truly fantastic. Uh, pictures here. So thank you so much for everyone who sent in their photos. Stay so tuned because we're going to ask you guys to look at another activity this week uh, and it's even a prize at the end. So hopefully we'll see even more photos, even more videos, even more weird and wonderful ways to show off your work. Send those in, we'll give you details at the end. Brilliant. So this week I said we're talking about classification. And that's a bit of a big word, isn't it? That's a big, tricky, science word. But really, all the classification means is sorting out into these different groups. Come on this way, let's have a little look. Over here, we've got loads and loads of different creatures we find in the water, find in our ocean. You might see some of them swimming around in the tank behind me. But how do we start to group these animals in different ways? How do we know what this animal does where it lives, what it might eat, eat why it's, it's group. group. Well, well that's, that's where classification comes in. And one of the best, best ways to classify an animal is something to do with their back. Something an animal might, might have along its back there. Have a little think, think there's, there's a really important science word that I've used, but animals with a special bit in their back. back. If, if you're, you're thinking, thinking of vertebrates, and you're, you're absolutely right, right. Come this way, let's get started. With some animals, they have vertebrates. And this means they have a backbone, they have a spine all the way down. If you take your hand and run it down your back, you can feel all those lumpy, bumpy, knobbly bits. And that is your backbone, that is your spine. And that makes you a vertebrate. Other animals are vertebrates too. And they look, oh, they look like this. This is a single vertebrate for a whale. And it's much bigger than ours, and it's so, so heavy. And whales, they're in a position of two, of course. Oh, and they are mammals. We're mammals and whales are mammals as well. So we put that on the vertebrate side. But there's a lot of some animals that are called vertebrates. It's not just mammals. Uh, all of these wonderful creatures behind uh, me, they are vertebrates as well. Of course, they are fish. So we can put a fish on our vertebrate group. Put a little bit of examples on my way. Come this way. We've got, uh, we've got a fish here. And we said that our fish is a vertebrate that has a spine all the way along the back here. A knobbly, bobbly, bumpy spine. Oh, there is another animal on the list of in front of me, which is a fish. What could it be? Which animal here is the fish? Have a good look. Scratch your head, have a little think. Perhaps tell the person next to you. It's a bit of a weird one, it's a little bit confusing. But it is in fact the seahorse. How weird is that? But the seahorse is in fact a fish. It's just a really, really funny looking fish. Because to be a fish, you have to have fins, you have to have a tail, but a very curly tail indeed. And it has to have gills on the side of its head to breathe water. 
And this is all three of those things. And it has those three things. Fins, tail, and gills. And it is a fish. Just a little bit more. Cool, we have lots of other animals here. So what groups do they belong to? Uh, we've seen some mammals, we've seen some fish. What about this one? Reptile. You can get reptiles under the water. Can you spot a reptile over here which lives under water? Which one is our reptile? Of course, it is the turtle. Turtles are reptiles. They're hard skin skin and they hard eggs. And you might spot somewhere in this type of mind. We have our very own reptile. You might see Friday the turtle cruising around her tank. Keep your eyes open and see if you can spot. I'm just seeing the distance there. And maybe you can too. Um, what do we keep doing? We have bird. We have bird, isn't it? That's a tricky one. It's not something you might expect to find bird. Normally they'd be flying through the sky. But the ocean has one of my favourite birds of all. This bird can't fly. Let's go back to the animals. Which one of them is this? Which one? Of course, this is an easy one. It's the only bird down here. It's the one called penguin. So you see penguins in the ocean. They are a bird. And of course, they've got feathers. Penguins are special. They take the pelicans to swim through the water really, really quickly. They get loads of speed. Unfortunately, this means they can't fly. And then the last thing about this, we sometimes say, I'm going to be amphibians. But I've never had amphibians in the ocean at all. Well, I haven't got any amphibians to show you today. So we'll put this one over there by itself. And I want you to just get, yeah, they don't want to have. Vertebrates, and they have this bony, lumpy spine down the back, which gives them a little bit of structure, a little bit of structure, helps them to move out. But some animals don't have this. Do you know the word animals that don't have this? I've got to think. It's kind of like vertebrates, but a little bit different. It is, of course, invertebrates. And an invertebrates are creatures which don't have a backbone. And there are loads of them. There are thousands, there are literally millions of invertebrates in the ocean. One of my favourite ones is this one over here. This is great big octopus. And this octopus here has no bones holding it up. It's all soft and squishy. And it has a great big octopus like this and squeeze into small places. They don't have to worry about their bones getting in the way and not being able to bend properly. But they can just swash them down as it's time to pose. It is really cool. But for some point, it can be hard to root an animal, hard to classify an animal, just by these roots. Yeah, we might want to know even more. And we can look at the history a bit further than just saying birds or only birds or these roots. So I'm going to choose to this side. Because we're going to look something a little bit like octopus, but slightly different. Come on, man. Now, to do this, instead of just looking at an animal on the outside, we're going to look at an animal on the inside. And this is going to get a bit messy, so I'm going to pop off. And I don't want to get any bits in my eyes, so I'm not quite. I'm ready, ready to go. Because today we have something really, really exciting. We have a squid, which we are going to dissect. The pot of squid just over here. And we're going to do this scientifically. So we're going to go, we treat this with respect. I'm going to learn something from it. And by learning something from it, by opening it up and having a look on the inside, we were able to put it into different groups. We can learn things about it from the outside, but also from the inside. So let me find this out just nice and fast so you can see what's going on. Wow, this squid has the fins on top, here is tail fins. And the squid has gills inside. 
but it definitely doesn't have uh, a tail like the fish does it. So we know straight away that it's not in that fish group. And if I were to pick it up and, like this, it is all floppy and moves about. That means it doesn't have a backbone. So this squid is an invertebrate. It has got these amazing appendages at the front though. And these here help attach its food. How many appendages do these women really want with this? Do you think a squid has? Have a little think. Maybe, Maybe it's similar, similar to an octopus. octopus. You'll have how many an octopus has. They have eight. So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten wibbly wobbly bits at the front. And this makes them different to octopus. So we can put them in a different group. They have to know what's the similarities though. If we come really close, you can see all these suckers underneath. And these suckers help the octopus, help the squid sorry, to grab all of its food and move it in towards its body. Right in the very centre of all these tentacles. The squid has a big beak. If I move these out of the way, you can just see that little black bit in there. And this is the squid's beak. So those tentacles grab all the squid move into the centre where its beak is ready to gobble up all that food. I'm going to try and take that beak out. So I can just grab the very tip of it. Because it's only held in place by soft tissues. So if I grab hold of that beak, I can wiggle it out here. Here it comes. There we go. And then there's two halves of this beak. So you can see one half on the top. I'm going to try and pull that other half out as well. There we go. If I hold it in my hand, can you see? This, this is half of the squid beak. Um, and they use this beak. Uh, they they can't, can't chew your food like you can chew your food. They also they don't, don't have the hands to chop it up with a knife and fork. So this beak is brilliant for grabbing chunks and tearing them off. They tear those chunks off and then swallow it whole. What's, What's really cool about the squid though, when I put this beak just over here, let me grab this pot. Because in this pot is the beak from a giant squid. And this is the biggest squid in the world. And you might have just seen there that that beak is like the size of my hand, it's like the size of my fist. And this squid is absolutely enormous. It's much, much bigger than the squid we see in front of us. So they can eat much larger things, they can eat big fish. Big animals lurking in deep. And sometimes they even battle with sperm whales. It's one of the coolest things in the ocean. Because these giant whales are over 10 metres long. And these massive squid of 8, 9, 10 metres themselves do these epic battles in the pitch black darkness. And the squid use this giant beak of theirs to just try and scare away sperm whales so they don't get eaten. What about that there? Okay, so we know that the squid has a beak for eating their food. What else do they have? Well, I'll rearrange your sentence back. You might see on top here, there's this funny little sock thing. And this funny sock, I can just lift it up like this. There's a little tube. And this is the tube where everything comes in and out. Have a little think, what might come in and out of the squid? What do you think? Some things flow in, some things flow out. Well, this is where the water goes in so they can breathe. The water goes into this tube and finds their gills inside. But some stuff can come out too. If the squid gets really, really scared, it's able to fire out a great big blob of ink. And that blob of ink can confuse their predators. But this is also where it gets really gross. This is where the poo comes out of. So the squid can fire their poo out of this tube too. And this is called the siphon. That's really, really important. So let's find out where it goes. To do this, I'm going to lift up this part of the body. This part of the body is called the mantle. And if you come down really, really close, it's just like a sock. Actually, that mantle uh, covers all the insides of the squid. 
but the water can really easily flow across it. Imagine that. Imagine, Imagine that. if you just like lifted up your arm, you could, could peer inside, inside and see all your insides. So strange and so weird. If I can pick up this sock like mantle, and I can slip open along the mantle here. And the mantle's not very thick, it's only a few millimetres. So I don't have to put too much effort into it. I can peel back the skin. Let's have a look inside. Wow, that's so cool. There are so many cool bits of the squid there. Let's go a little bit further so you can see better. Brilliant! Brilliant. Is there anything there that you might recognise? It certainly looks a bit tricky, doesn't it? It's so strange and alien-like. Well, we know that the siphon here helps to breathe. So let's see where it goes. This tube breaks in half. So there's one here. And then 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 there's one here. And these tubes then fire water out this way. Water shoots along here. Across these wiggly, wavy kind of things down here. These wiggly, wavy things, these are squid gills. They need gills to breathe under water, just like a fish does. The water fires across their gills so they can keep breathing. And there's a gill each side, there's one here, and there's one over here. Then you've got all this stuff in the middle, this kind of pinky bits and this white bits up here. And this, and this is all to do with the squids eating. So, so when the food goes through the beak, it comes up this way into this cavity here, the digestion cavity, and it's broken up into small pieces. And all, and all the, the yummy stuff, all the bits of squid needs to survive, all the nutrients, comes into this white part here. This is called the cecum. Now, we said that squid are similar to octopus, and they've got a couple of similarities. Um, and one of them is their hearts. So the heart is just about here. But they don't have one heart like us. Squid actually have three hearts. So they've got one main heart, and then they've got one for each of their gills. And it means if they're scared, they can use it a bit like a jetpack. And these hearts can kick in the overdrive and shoot the squid off so they can escape from its predators. Finally, we can finish up with our squid here. We said that it doesn't have a backbone. We said it's an invertebrate. It has something slightly different though. If I lift these tentacles up and place them just here, then at the bottom of the squid, it's this kind of rough, hard bit. If I make a little snip in the end, just like this, and I squeeze this bit back, Hopefully, it starts to poke out. Oh, I can just about see it. Here it comes. Here we go. All oh, in place. Oh, all the way out. There it is. Brilliant. So this thing here, this is called a pen. And this is the squid pen. And it's not a backbone, because we know it's not a vertebrate. The squid is an invertebrate. But it's got this strange bit here. And this helps it to stop being floppy. It makes the squid a little bit more rigid in the water, so it can swim in a straight direction, nice and streamlined. Fantastic. I'm going to pop that down just there. Excellent. So, we've had a little look inside the squid, and we can see loads and loads of things. We can tell us which group it's in. We can see that. It's the invertebrate. We had a little look and we saw that there was no backbone. And there's loads of things that we saw that were similar to octopus. We said it has tentacles, it has suckers, it has three hearts. But by looking inside, we saw that that's a little bit different. And scientists can do this, uh, they can bring out what animals look like on the outside and what they look like on the inside. And it helps us to classify them, put them into groups. What I love about the ocean, though, is that we just don't know everything yet. There are so much that we don't know, we haven't learned about, we haven't seen before. And a lot of this takes place in the deep sea. So, I've got a bit of challenge you. I want you 
So imagine that you are a scientist and you're on a deep sea expedition. You climb inside your submarine and you travel deep down in the ocean. It's getting darker and darker and darker. And as you travel around in the depths of the ocean, you turn on your submarine headlights and in front of you, you find an animal that nobody has ever seen before. That actually happens, by the way. Scientists go into the deep and find animals that no one's ever discovered. What we would like to do is, what we like to do, to create your own creature. And I wasn't here, but I think you have a much better job. Get as wild or as imaginative as possible. Imagine whilst you're down there, swimming around in the dark and the murky waters. What creature do you come across? Have a go at my drawing it. Make it. Perhaps do some paper mache. Maybe you can make a cake like it. Who knows? You can do whatever you like. But we would like to see your animals as you find the best. Let us know. What sort of things does it eat? Where else does it live? What are all the bits on its body and what are they doing? Once you've got that, send it to us here at the Agrarian because we would love to see everything done. The email address to use is learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. I'll say it again for you. That's learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. Can't wait to see all your uh, pictures, all your videos, anything you may send it our way, we'd love to check out. If you do send it, there is a surprise for that one to make it really, really good. Wonderful. The client is leave there. I'm looking forward to seeing all your comments, forward to seeing all your videos, and everything you're sending to us. Uh, I'm going to leave you with your time with us. If you have enjoyed this, and had a great time, and don't forget, we can have a birthday party with us, we can have a private tour with us, or if you're part of the school group, we can have a full tour of the aquarium, virtually uh, from your party or from your home. Check out all those bits on our website, oceanshowconservationtrust.org. I'm going to be there. I uh, hope you've had a great time, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you all very much. Goodbye.